All right, now in this alveolar model, you gotta imagine that at this point, air has traveled all the way from the nose, through the pharynx, into the larynx, into the trachea, down through the bronchi, primary, secondary, tertiary, 12 different orders of branching through all those bronchi before coming to the end of the road for the conduction zone, the conduction of air. We're finally gonna get to start to have gas exchange at this point down here. We're very microscopic at this level. So when we make it to the end of those bronchi and those tubes start to get less than one millimeter in diameter, very small at that point, that is now going to be a bronchial. And it's going to be the end of the conduction zone, the very end. Therefore, it's called the terminal bronchial. So the terminal bronchial is this tube right here that leads down to these different alveolar sacs that are found through the lungs. Millions of these per lung, right? There is a tiny little bit of cartilage left, but very, very little by the time we get to these terminal cartilage, or sorry, the terminal bronchioles. And what you'll also notice when you look at the model is they start to be surrounded by these helical bands of smooth muscle that are gonna help with the contraction and relaxation. But more importantly now, these terminal bronchioles are going to branch. And when they do, that's the absolute end of the road for the conduction zone. And now we're going to move into the respiratory zone. Respiration means gas exchange. So at this point, gas exchange can start. We'll come back and talk about epithelial tissue in just a second. Now this is going to be where large amounts of gas exchange starts occurring. And these are called respiratory bronchioles. Terminal bronchioles move into the respiratory bronchioles. The respiratory bronchioles basically do not have cartilage around them for all intents purposes. And they have lots and lots of smooth muscle wrapped around them to help controlling those diameters. Now, these respiratory bronchioles, there's one more down here, they are gonna branch down into these big clusters of alveoli. They kind of look like grapes on the end of a bunch of grapes, right? And the respiratory bronchioles, they move down into this entire mass. Now, they don't last very long. They're actually gonna move into another tube that passes down into each one of these individual clusters. You can see there's a demarcation um, using these arteries or arterioles basically down at this point that shows we have one alveolar sac and another alveolar sac and another alveolar sac. Each one of these alveolar sacs are fed with what's called an alveolar duct. So that's what we have going on on the side of this right here. Okay, the respiratory bronchioles, they are going to move and become an alveolar duct. And the alveolar duct is going to allow for the air to move out into the individual sacs, known as alveoli plural, alveolus singular. Each one of these alveoli are completely surrounded with pulmonary capillaries. You can see those on the models. We have lots of gas exchange. We need lots and lots of blood, poorly oxygenated blood becoming richly saturated oxygenated blood through this process. Awesome. Fantastic. So when you look at this model, there's one area that's kind of shown as a dark shadowed area. Those are the alveolar ducts that feed into this cluster of alveoli. Cool. Other things to think about with these alveoli, you need to try to probably remember, in my opinion, it's pretty darn important. They're covered with elastic fibers. That's gonna help with the recoil of these lungs. It's causing the lungs to wanna collapse all the dang time. That's really important in terms of creating subatmospheric pressures and lung inflation, although it might sound uh, counterintuitive if you're listening to the anatomy for the first time, but start learning the physiology and you'll see the importance of that. In terms of epithelial tissues, okay, we go from bronchi, which we need to have 
with mucus and we need to make sure very little diffusion occurs at that level. So those are going to be the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelial tissue. But now as we pass down into the bronchioles, bronchioles start becoming smaller and thinner. The thinner a wall is, the faster diffusion can occur. So when we start getting down into the terminal bronchioles, we start moving down into simple cuboidal epithelial tissue. We, we, we really, we, we lose the, um, the ciliation. Uh, by the way, like 10th order, 11th order, we start to lose the cilia there too, but now we're gonna be kind of this scattered, ciliated, columnar epithelial tissue. So it's starting to move or progress through our epithelial tissue. So by the time we make it here, it's gonna be simple cuboidal. And then when we make it down into the respiratory, simple cuboidal kind of takes over completely. And when we make it into the alveolar duct, it's simple squamous. So once we're in the alveolar duct, we can really start to have diffusion. And the alveolar duct make it out to the alveoli, and the alveoli, of course, are simple squamous epithelial tissue as well. So please, 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 hopefully you're following along with the progression of the epithelial tissue. It's important in terms of function determines, function determines, what am I saying? Structure determines function. The last thing I'm gonna point out on these models is that on these models, we have lots of connective tissue on the outside. And this is actually a representation of the visceral pleura on these models. I know it doesn't really look like it, but this big, nice membrane that's on the outside here is the visceral pleura. At least many professors teach it as such. A lot of professors just say it's connective tissue. That's fine too. All right, that's the end of the road in terms of the movement or flow of air through the respiratory system. I highly recommend learning this as a flowchart. Write down each one of those words independent from the pictures, then go back into the pictures and start to identify each one of those structures. I am still gonna show a couple more models, so stick around with me. Um, um, I am going to be showing the different uh, lobes of the lungs and some of the major anatomical features of the lungs themselves. All right.